are micrometers? Ever get a 3D print that just doesn't quite fit together correctly? Measure it with calibers, looks like it's gonna fit, you try to snap it together, but nope. That's where micrometers come in. Today we're gonna talk about micrometers and where you need them for 3D printing. We're also gonna talk about how to use them without feeling like you're in math class. Oh, and stick around because I'm gonna show you some micrometers I think are perfect for makers. <laughs> So first off, what are these things? A micrometer is a super precise tool. While a caliper is more like a multi-tool, a micrometer is more like the scalpel of your workshop. It's a little slower to use, but it's a lot more accurate. We're talking down to one thousandth of a millimeter. It's thinner than a human hair, split three ways. Now there are a few types of micrometers. Outside micrometers, like you see here, are perfect for 3D printing because they allow you to measure the thickness of filament, the walls of your models, and anything else you may want to test. There are also inside micrometers that measure hole diameter and depth micrometers that measure recesses or grooves. But today we're focusing on outside micrometers, which is mostly what you're going to need in your makerspace or for 3D printing. Now, why bother with a micrometer? Well, let's say your filament box says it's 1.75 millimeters. Awesome. But you bought cheap filament, and maybe it's actually 1.8 millimeters or even 1.85 millimeters. Oh, and what if you started recycling all your prints and decided you were going to make your own filament? Those tiny differences could cause under extrusions, clogs, or even blobs. And if you've ever had a blob, you know it can really wreck through your printhead. With a micrometer, you could actually test your filament and get a real number. Then you're able to adjust your flow rate in your slicer. Another big reason is tolerance. If you're designing pressed together parts or things like hinges, a 0.05 millimeter difference could be the difference between a part snapping together and one that needs some sandpaper therapy. Okay, now let's actually get to using these micrometers. This is the Fowler Extra Value 2, and we're going to measure some of our filament. And this is an outside micrometer. So we're zeroed out. We're just going to open this up. We're going to put our filament in. Look at that, right on the money. That is super close, 1.754. So when should you use a micrometer instead of a caliper? Here's an easy rule. Calipers are for fast general measurements, while micrometers are for laser-like precision. And the reason why is micrometers have a fine tuning knob that you could turn and it turns ever so slightly in order to get a really accurate measurement. Now let's talk about some of the actual models we have here. Fowler makes my favorite micrometer and they have a ton of different options for makers and professionals. Let's break it down. So the Fowler Extra Value 2 electronic micrometer is the one I recommend for most makers. It's affordable and has a resolution down to 0.001 millimeters. It has carbide measuring faces and a ratchet for consistent pressure. No fancy Bluetooth, but for most makers, you're not gonna need that. If you want reliable, precise measurements for filaments or parts you need to fit together, this is a really good choice. And it's right in the sweet spot of most makers' budgets. The Bowers Digimic Electronic Micrometer is one that's sort of in the middle ground. It has Bluetooth IP67 protection and even higher accuracy. It's great if you want a higher level of detail and wireless logging. Definitely for a more advanced maker, Pro or even a lab. Now the Fowler Rapid Mic Bluetooth Electronic Micrometer is one high-tech option. It's got Bluetooth, IP67 protection, adjustable measuring force, and crazy precision. Best part is you can beam your results straight to your phone or your computer. That saves a ton of time if you're logging multiple points on your filament or checking multiple parts. The downside is it costs more. It's for pros, small shops, and anyone doing a lot of quality control. So if you're selling high precision prints, this may be the one that's for you. 
So here's the takeaway. If you're a hobbyist or maker, you would probably want to go with the Fowler Extra Value 2. It's all the precision you'll need without breaking the bank. If you're running a shop, a print farm, doing a lot of batch prints, or just love logging your data like I do, then go with one of the Bluetooth models, the Rapid Mic or the Digi Mic. They'll both save you time and reduce a lot of errors because with these, you're logging your data right to your phone or your computer. Either way, Fowler's got you covered with a wide range of micrometers. Here's a couple of tips before you start measuring everything in your shop. Wipe your micrometer and your part before measuring because even a little dust could change the results. Measure at room temp because heat can expand your parts. And if you're measuring filament, take multiple measurements and average them. So that's micrometers, what they are, how they work, and which one may be right for you. If you ever had a part that didn't fit together, this tool will become your best friend. Let me know in the comments below if you ever had a mystery filament that ruined a print. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making.